Hello folks, welcome to another Inkdependence.com video. This time not a review, but a little bit of an instructional video. Uh, you may have noticed that I've been including chromatography on my videos and reviews as a thing that somebody said, hey, I missed those. I said, oh great, well I'll do that some more. Uh, but the thing is, a lot of people don't know how to do this, and it's super simple, so I thought I'd share. I was going to do another ink review video, and then I realized I hadn't done the chromatography for this Duke ink. It's uh, Duke Black. comes in kind of a nondescript bottle. I'll talk about that on the blog soon. Uh, but I wanted to go ahead and show people how to do this chromatography if they wanted to. Supplies are simple and cheap. Uh, just get some coffee filters. I use these number four white coffee filters. You want the bleached ones. Uh, and I like cone filters. They're way better than the basket filters for this. Even when the basket filters are flattened out, and you can iron them, I tried that, but you get a very sort of see-through uh, filter. You see there's not really any contrast there, they're just much more pale. Uh, I like these because they're thicker for some reason. Uh, so get yourself some of these cone filters. I like the number fours because they're the biggest ones, therefore the larger coffee, coffee makers. And cut yourself off strips. Uh, I end up with just sort of, you know, scraps left over and I just kind of cut strips like this way out of there, and then I cut those strips in half, and then voila, I have chromatography strips. It's not official chromatography, chromatography paper, but look, you're not doing science, you're just checking out some ink, so don't worry about that too much. All right, once you've got that done, uh, you can use a pen if you've got a pen that's inked up with the ink that you want to do. I've already taken that ink out of a pen, though, so I'm going to use my trusty letter opener. It looks like a sword, very fancy. And I'm just going to dip it into the bottle of ink a little bit. And I clean this thing off before, between inks and all that sort of jazz. There's not really any cross-contamination. And you just put a drop here close to the bottom, but not at the bottom. There we go. Oops, now i got to put this down somewhere with one hand. All right, there we go. All right. Now, you don't want to let it dry, so I'm going to go ahead and hurry up. And you just dip the end into some regular old water. I use a shot glass uh, from a called Papacitos that I used to work in when I was uh, in college and just out of college. You can see, oops, I dipped it in too, too, too deep. You don't really want to get to the ink because then it you know, sort of fouls with the water just a little bit. But you can see, as we give it a little bit of time and as the paper soaks up the water, you see that black ink creeping up. It's just the pigments are being pushed up through the paper by the water as it travels. You can see sort of, can I get my finger there? Right here is about where the water level is on the paper now. All right, come on. Let's go. Maybe this is a pretty heavy ink. Maybe it's going to have some water resistance. Let's see how it goes. Sometimes it'll get pushed all the way up to the top of the page, and actually this will keep going uh, even after you take it out of the water because it does uh, continue, you know, uh, the capillary action is sucking that water off the paper. All right, probably good enough. And then what I do is I just take and hang it somewhere to let it dry a bit. Uh, this is my computer desk. Let's see if I can get this to work with one hand. There we go. All right. Now this will just sit here and it will dry out. And by the time I'm ready to do a review, it will be dry. It doesn't take long for a coffee filter to dry, obviously. And you can sort of see the bands of color. Very little here left where I originally put that drop of ink. See, it's pushed it straight up. It was a very black, black. Nothing else really going on in here except for the black. So, anyway, there you go. That's how you do uh, simple chromatography. This right here is a picture my grandma painted on a piece of wood a long time ago. It's very nice. All right. Um, so this is chromatography, uh, sort of 101, super easy. Uh, now I expect I'll have lots of competition in the chromatography sphere, but I don't care. Science! Independence, out.